I don't even know who you are. I am the man. I am the Raw Women's Champion. What the hell? To everybody that was saying, why didn't you unhook her arms? Her answer was, there's more to the story. I'd like to know. She's a smart girl. She knew what she was doing. Welcome everyone to the Bell. This is DS. And the Sriracha Muchacha. Hello, my star. <laughs> I brought my teacup for this special episode. Yes. With our tea expert. Our tea expert, Logan Zass. Hey, I am back. Logan, you look amazing. What's your look inspired by? I'm a survivor. Cause we're in quarantine and I, <laughs> I, love that. I have my Beyonce hair on. I have a little like hammo. So we're just doing some Beyonce Destiny's Child Survivor today. Uh, so let's talk about this weekend's money in the bank. So we have two women's match confirmed. First is the women's money in the bank match, which will happen with the men's money in the bank match. We're going to talk about that a little bit more, but it's Asuka versus Shayna Baszler versus Nia Jax versus Dana Brooke versus Lacey Evans versus Carmella. I totally forgot Lacey Evans was in it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Let's do quick prediction. Dana Brooke. Prediction, uh, Shayna Baszler. I'll just say Asuka. <laughs> and the next match we have SmackDown Women's Championship between Bailey and Tamina. I want Tamina, but I'm pretty sure it's gonna be Bailey. It's gonna be Bailey. Unfortunately, I think it will be Bailey too. Wah, wah, wah. I wouldn't be surprised if Tamina wins, but by disqualification, so that oh. title won't change hands. I'm gonna start a prayer circle so we can all pray for Tamina to win this. Sis needs it. She needs Sis something. Needs to buy like, something. And you know, right. I'm any chance we get, can we get Bailey out of the picture? Send her on a break, send her on vacation. She needs it, she's working hard. Or somebody else, they're building for the Sasha and Bailey storyline. I know, we're okay. Can we get that? But it's probably not gonna happen. Anymore. They don't even need the title, that storyline doesn't even need the title. But I think everyone wants to see, and everyone looks at it like Sasha Banks deserves gold. She but does. I think that's how this is where it's gonna go, where it should have gone already. I feel like mm -hmm. it's being dragged on so long. So, the this is a report from last SmackDown. Money in the Bank ladder matches will take simultaneously at WWE HQ. So both men and women are gonna like run up the HQ together. This match is gonna happen at the same time, which is, which sounds like a big mess. It sounds like such a mess. I don't know if it's gonna be a cluster or if it's gonna be the greatest thing ever. In these crazy times, WWE has pulled out some stuff that you never thought it would work, but it could actually work. So I'm super interested to see how it's gonna work. Whenever I heard about it yesterday, I'm like, can they wrestle each other? But <laughs> right. I'm kinda... thinking it's like six men, six women, all on the first floor in the ring together. So the ring's gonna be upstairs. So do they just start out in the lobby and they're like, ready, set, yeah. go? I guess so. Like... I this just sounds like a mess and it sounds like to me like it's gonna take away some of like, it's gonna be a distraction. Oh, she got stapled or she got, <laughs> she's using the hole puncher and like. Yeah, it sounds like it's more of like a race. No. I'm expecting a lot of cameo from like all the McMahons. What floor was your office at, Diaz? My floor was third floor. Okay, let's see if they can go to the third floor then. I hope so. My photo was up there with Austin Theory. Oh my God. That would be so <laughs> funny if you get like a little glimpse. <laughs> Someone catches that, pause it, and circle it and send it to uh, Diaz. <laughs> so the man that's going to be participating is. Daniel Bryan, King Corbin, Rey Mysterio, Aleister Black, and Otis. So I don't really see that many people that are directly related with the women participants. Yeah, not much storyline with those guys. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Maybe yeah. they'll have like funny or cute random interactions where like Otis is like after you, like letting like the women <laughs> go up the elevator. I can totally see that happen. <laughs> I would have been if Mandy was in the match, but I'd yeah. rather yeah. Bella than Mandy. So they keep teasing that someone's gonna fall off the roof. So I'm hoping some wire action to take place. I hope not. The last time they had somebody fall it was that terrible edit with Elias. Elias. He's like, this isn't live, y'all. I don't got to put my body on the line. <laughs> yeah. You're right. You're so there could have been a potential spoiler on Raw about this Money in the Bank match because they were keep advertising that Becky Lynch is coming back. She's been away for a couple weeks. The advertising is saying that Becky Lynch will come back to Raw to face the Money in the Bank winner. So then which... it means somebody from Raw is... It's probably gonna win. To win. Do we think someone from Raw is gonna win? Shayna. Oh, um, I just. Shayna. I, I would love if Nia won. Like I said, I was like, I would love to see Nia face off with 
with Becky. Let's yeah. get the, let's break her face or break somebody's face again. Not literally, but you know, yeah. I want I just want that. Like I we never got anything from that. We just yeah. got a quick like punch to the face, and that it was, was and that's what started kicked off really the man characters. So yeah. I feel like yeah, they should yeah. be like really off for that. Naya's manhandling everybody, so then why can't she just go after the man then? If that's if she yeah. that she likes to do. Speaking of Becky Lynn, she's been basically a part timer last month because she's been super busy. She just showed up on the season five of Billions. Do you guys watch Billions? Mm -mm. So apparently it's a show about hedge fund. I watched a clip that Becky Lynch was in. She shows up. Motherfucker, just let me in. Who are you? I will run right through you. She like jobs for a main character or one of the characters. <laughs> And then she starts talking about the meaning of jobbing, how it's like important for you to job for other people to make them look good. The man, Becky Lynch. <laughs> so there was some kind of like tie into her giving a lesson to people at the hedge fund company, I'm guessing. Okay. <laughs> was it funny? Right. Did she yeah. do the job? I mean, she was just playing herself. So she was just good uh, as herself. So she was I good. thought it was kind of cool. The only thing that I knew about that is the creator of that show on his podcast said a while ago that he was going to give her a walk on role on the show. So I think it was uh, really cool that he really did do it and deliver. Because I see the Becky Lynch uh, t-shirt that you have there. So just wondering, is this- The man has an open invitation. She wants to come. On the show? Sure. We'll figure it out. Here first. We'll figure it out. But here's an exciting news about Becky Lynch is that she is set to join the MCU, the Marvel Cinematic Universe. According to Netflix call sheet, they tweeted out saying Becky Lynch is grabbing Hollywood's eye and she's also in a certain upcoming Marvel movies. That's a big news. It also is interesting because Disney seems to be very interested in WWE superstars because there was also news a couple months ago that Sasha Banks is going to be in Mandalorian second season. Oh. Okay, okay, Chris. I especially love that they're looking at the women because I feel like the men you always see the men crossing over to movies yeah. it's very rarely that you see the women do that so i think it's awesome that the women are stepping into that mm -hmm. what do you want to see becky lynch do in mcu anything <laughs> Kick ass. I mean, at this point, it's, she's like, yeah she's unstoppable i'm like she could literally do anything and i think we'd all be entertained yeah i mean there's an upcoming black widow movie so she could be one of the other black widow agents and also the upcoming okay. shang chi movie is supposed to have the whole tournament setting so she can also show up as one of the competitors there right now a rumor that's going around is that she might be showing up as one of the grapplers. Grapplers is like a group of female wrestler villains and they might be showing up on the Disney Plus show, The Falcon and the Winter Soldier. The rumor said that one of the bad guys has brilliantly bright red curly hair. Mm -hmm. Sounds familiar. Sounds um. familiar. Sounds like the man. Let's talk about Charlotte Flair a little bit. She is the queen and she's now in NXT dominating the division. When she first won the NXT Women's Championship, the expectation was that she's going to bring in the views. But unfortunately, her match against Mia Yim did very poorly in ratings. Aww. Oh, I That's love that. Match. I love that match, actually. Yeah, I think the match was like pretty good. Yeah, it was the second lowest point of the show, drawing less than average ratings that NXT usually gets. Interesting and not really a good look, but I don't know. I guess we'll see how it plays out. Yeah, and I'm like, is this backfiring? Like putting the belt on Charlotte? It's like no one interested now. I'm like, uh oh. It's already happening, which is really sad. Is she the NXT champion, but she's still like a raw roster member? I have no idea. It sounds like both because she made it seem that she's pulling double duty. Yeah. Remember in her team, she's like, I'm doing NXT and Raw. So it's like she didn't want to let go of Raw. Let's go into tea section. So because it's quarantine time, there's not many news. So all the past divas are serving. And it's Michelle McCool. She was on this interesting Instagram live by Nine Line Apparel. It's a patriotic apparel shop. It's like huge American flag and there was like a rifle in the back. That's the interviewer. <laughs> <laughs> they started talking about the feud, an actual real life feud with Beth Phoenix and it all started in 2008. And we talked about it a little bit a couple months ago with James Mansfield too. Fans dug that up and started telling Beth to explain it, like explain yourself Beth. And Beth Phoenix tweeted out, there's more to the story than you know. And Michelle McCool would reply to a fan talking about it, saying that, strange, I wish I knew it, but I don't. Wrestling is so dull right now, and fans are so hungry for any kind of like intense feud that they're brewing like 
12 year old tea. So in 2008, she had a champion versus champion match against Michelle McCool. And apparently Glamazon did not let her arms go. Michelle McCool fell on her face and she got a concussion. Well, she didn't unhook my arms. She definitely knew how because she'd had plenty of matches. Um, ended up giving me a concussion. I didn't sell it. I'm not gonna let you know that you, you know, did anything and actually let it go. And then years after that, in the WWE magazine, she made a comment about it. I was like, oh, so she did know what she did. Okay. Still no biggie. We still had to work these storylines. Um, she didn't really enjoy working myself and Layla, I don't think. So that recently resurfaced because of all the fans bringing it up. But I guess just a couple of weeks ago on Twitter, people posted that finish where it's like, I think it was in relation to the coronavirus because my head's hitting the mat. It's one of those deals like coronavirus has me like, you know, boom, boom. that led to a lot of people asking. I'm all about if I know somebody, if I have an issue, I'm going to ask you out of respect, out of love, in a loving way. I'll, I'll ask you. Well, I guess her answer was um, to everybody that was saying, why didn't you unhook her arms? Her answer was there's more to the story or there's two sides to the story or something. And I was like, oh, I'd like to know. Like, what are the sides of the story? And Michelle texted her what that story is. So I liked a few messages and you know, people don't miss anything. Um, I was kind of like, I, I would like to know. Radio silence. I reached out personally, basically saying, you know, I would love to know the rest of the story. Like, I don't know what happened, what the heck happened. It seems a little calculated. Like you're putting it out there insinuating that I've got something to hide or I've done something which there's a lot of people again going back to what we talked about that see a lot of other women as gods but because i date mark they hate on me so much so i think when she put that out there there's two sides to the story it was kind of she's a smart girl she knew what she was doing she's like tell me i want to know <laughs> <laughs> and beth was like and i didn't get anything for several days and then i got a response that basically said um we should be so grateful and my response was, you are absolutely correct. You've still given me zero answer. That's all I need to know now. Just enough said. I don't know. I don't know. That's just what happens sometimes in life. Sometimes you don't know what you do to people. Maybe we see a match in the future. Nah. No. Nah. I think it's shade at its finest. <laughs> I mean, it's shady. It's really shady, but it's just like, I do want to know the story. Is when's Beth going to tell us this story? What's her side? What did Michelle do to Beth that Michelle doesn't even know? <laughs> what did she do? It's a mystery. If I want to be back there, like, with my notes, like, okay, so on this day in 2009, Michelle said, well, she doesn't even know. She's been thinking y'all best friends. Okay. I want to know really, like, why, what this is. Because I'm sure Beth has a reason, or maybe she doesn't. And she's just like, I don't like Michelle. Her. The only thing that I guess that threw me off about that really was the she's like, oh, I didn't let her know that I was hurt because I, if they're gonna hurt me, I'm not gonna let them know that they hurt me. If it's like you get a concussion, you have to let them know that they you got a concussion. I mean, they, it was the finish of the match. It's not like they kept on going, uh -huh. but like if you get injured, you could you could be like. Oh hey, you rang my bell or got or like I got a concussion off of that. I think her saying like, oh, I don't want her to know that I'm hurt because I'm tough and stuff. And like, yeah, you're tough, but like a concussion is a concussion. Believe me, I think I'm like super tough. And I tried to play off like when I got a concussion, the last concussion tried to play off like I didn't know, like, oh, it's no big deal. No, I was lost backstage. I didn't know where I was going. I was super disoriented, you know. Like hiding a concussion is not a, a badge of honor, is what I guess I should say. Oh, and that's it. totally a different way of seeing it than what is being presented but like i guess that's the i don't want to say like it's obviously it's not michelle's fault she's just taking the move and it was a, an unsafe way to give the move without her letting her arms go but also like i feel like michelle should have been like hey you know like you hurt me or like i have a concussion off of that and like probably maybe even confronted her then or if not maybe the next day about it and have a conversation about it, it doesn't even have to be confrontation mm -hmm. you know like oh bitch you hurt me and stuff like yeah. that it could be like hey what happened was it miscommunication could we have worked on it i don't know but seeing that clip like what could possibly be the second side <laughs> you know i think that beth is probably going to say something along the lines of well because she never said anything to me about it yeah. i didn't think there was an issue but then it gets shady when, you know, I guess yeah. there's a misunderstanding. Yeah. It sounds like a misunderstanding because none yeah, of them it are, really does. They don't want to talk about it with each other. There just has to be some communications going on. And the second tea we're going to talk about is also about communication. A bunch of cheap, interchangeable, expendable, useless women. Watch your face! Watch your face! 
yeah, this is kind of rude and terrible and uh, rudely honest what I'm saying, but it's gonna help us all in the long run. But here, they need to communicate. I mean, wrestling is all about trusting each other, so I don't know how exactly. this can happen sure. and they continue to work. From interviewing other women, like multiple and multiple of them told me that they completely trust Beth and they like credit her for making their career, making some of the best matches of their life. Beth is one of those people who is so talented, but also so good at helping others. Like you could be talented and not necessarily be a good teacher, right? Or like be a good leader. She was talented and an incredible leader. And I was so lucky to be able to work with her. Here I go, like that takes so much trust. And I had the ultimate amount of trust in her. And, and I think that she is what gave me confidence in the ring. Beth was one of my favorite competitors. I loved wrestling against her. We always had a blast against each other. And she just let me pull out all these moves. Like she was always like, yes, let's do it. I want to do backflips. I wanted to jump off the top. I really wonder what happened and like why there is such a lack of communication going on between two. They definitely, like you said, I think all this could have been prevented if they would have just like popped to each other. Yeah, it just sounds like big egos, like, you know. Yeah. No one wants to talk about the elephant in the room. Like clearly Beth knew she did it. Clearly Michelle knew she had a concussion, but no one wants to bring it up. I think Lillian Garcia should interfere, bring them to Chasing Glory. And she should be like, let's talk about it, girl. Get them on the podcast. Get them on <laughs> the Lillian podcast. Garcia, she should be like the Oprah of oh, like, she will. have like her own talk show and have like a yeah. yeah. But that is this week's news and rumors, super explosive. I might turn it into two because there's so much tea. But thank you so much for joining in. Logan, where can we find you? You can find me on Instagram at Logan Zass. It's L-O-G-A-N-Z-A-S-S. -S. You can find me on Twitter and Instagram as well at Columbus Stars. And you can find me at DS Shin and ring the bell DS on Twitter. All right, bye.